Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Anjosi and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be having a look at an updated elevator tutorial. I'm going to show you how to build a multi-floor elevator very simply here in Stormworks. But before we get started, if you are enjoying these videos, don't forget that like and subscribe button and remember the bell icon to be notified for upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. So I said, let's get straight into it and to get started with this video. So we're back here in Stormworks now. We're going to be taking a look at how to build a multi-floor elevator. Um, now, I've already done a video on this, I think about, about a year and a half ago and how to do it, but we didn't have microprocessors back then on the day. Now, there is a much easier way to do it. Uh, so we're going to walk through it today. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can build a really nice, small, compact little mic controller and you can add more and more features onto it. Like you can see, this is pretty much spec'd out as much as you can get uh, where we've got the outside doors. We even have an inside door. Uh, we have our different floors that we can go to. And this whole system can actually work on different levels for each floor. So for example, your first floor could be 10 blocks high. The next floor could be 20 blocks high and so on and so forth. So you can adapt it and it's quite easy to actually to set up. Now you'll see if I just go and jump into it. So let's imagine this is the elevator. This is our inside door and outside door. We can press level two. Both those doors close and this one goes and open up. So it's really nice. And this bottom door will actually stay closed. And you can see all the other doors will stay closed at the same time. And it all works through one small little control panel and obviously one little microprocessor. So we're going to learn how to build it. Um, so let's go and just start off by coming over here. And we're going to go and delete everything that I've already built. And we can work our way through getting everything that we need. So you can see here, I've got a very empty base here. You can imagine this will be the floor of our creation. And then we have our different levels. So you can you can mark them as however you want to. I'm just gonna go here and say, okay, we have one level there. We can have another one there and let's say another one there. So we have, let's say what, one, two, three different levels on this example. Okay, actually four, because if you count the top piece here. Now, the first thing you want is obviously all your components. The first component you're going to need is a rail system. So you can see we're just going to use the linear track base and we're going to use the extensions. I'm going to put a track base down here at the bottom, make sure it's got positive facing up and we're just going to go and get the expansion. Okay, we're just going to expand it all the way up to the top. Now you could use multiple of these. You don't have to just use one. Uh, you could use obviously as many of these as you want to just make sure they're all running on the same uh, number node. Now you could also do it different ways. Uh, you could obviously also use the linear track, the three block one. This one actually sends out where it is on its track. There's different ways of doing it. I just like this way. I think it's the easiest way personally to do it. So once you have this, the next thing you need to do is actually build your platform itself for the elevator. So I'm just gonna go here and just build a very, very small little platform. And you can see that's what's gonna be bringing us up to the different levels. Now on each level, I'm actually just going to build this out. So almost to show you as if it's really hitting the level that I wanted to hit. So you can see, I'm just gonna build this out. You'll imagine that on your creation, this would have already been built. You already have had your levels that you wanna be going to. So once we have that, uh, the next thing we can do is actually getting how to control it. How are we gonna tell it what level we wanna to go to? Now you could just use push buttons, toggle buttons. You could use a different number of things. You can use up arrows, down arrows. I'm just going to go and use a panel here, composite panel, instrument panel. And we're gonna go and put that on our creation. So you can see, I'm just gonna put it over there. I'm going to go into that and I'm just going to say, okay, the first one is floor one and we're going to have a button for it. The next one is floor two and I'm going to have a, a button for it. The next one is the third floor. I'm going to have a button for it. And then let's say the fourth floor, once again, floor four, and I'm going to have a button for it. While you're here, you might as well also just go and put the channels. So for first floor, channel one, second floor, channel two, third floor, channel three, and fourth floor, channel four. Okay, this way you'll just remember it's easier when you come down to actually building your mic processor in a few seconds. Once we've got that, the next thing we're going to need is of course the mic processor itself. So what I'm going to go in now is I'm going to go and build my mic processor. Now you see I've already got one built, but I'm going to be building a brand new one here. So let's call this our lift MC. Okay, just for examples here. And let's start adding our logic on. We'll need our composite in. Okay, that's what we're going to be pushing it, telling it go to first floor, go second, go third, go fourth. Okay, we're going to need an out. That's what's going to be telling it to go up and down. Okay, so this is going to be for the lift itself. Okay, and there's going to be one extra thing that we haven't added on yet, and that's going to be a distance sensor. 
Okay, so we're gonna come in and it's gonna be distance coming into it. This is what's actually gonna tell the system where it is on its line. Okay, so let's go back to our creation. Let's go get a distance sensor. I'm gonna put a simple, small little distance sensor and we're gonna put it on the actual lift itself. Now you could hide this any way you want to. I'm just gonna be placing it here. You'll see that there's a load of a gap underneath it and that's what we want. Once we've got that on, we can go back to our microcontroller here and we can actually start going into the logic. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're just going to separate everything out for the meantime so we know where everything is. The first thing we want to do is we want to decrypt all of the four different push buttons we have. So we can open it up, we're going to go down to composite read, and we're going to go and have four of those. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so you can see here we've got all those in there. We can actually go and put the read channels on there too. And that's going to send us an on signal when everyone's pressing one, two, three, or four. Now that we've got that, we also want to go and actually send a number. We want to say, I want to be in channel one, I want to be on floor one, I want to be in floor two, etc., etc. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to get a switch box. Okay, we're going to get a numerical switch box and we're going to get four of those. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. Once we have that, we can scroll in a bit. You can see if I press one, it's going to go and toggle this on. If I press two, it's going to toggle this one. If I press three, it's going to toggle this one. If I press four, it's going to toggle this one. The next thing we're going to do is going to get constant numbers and this is where we can go and actually tell it what floor we want to go to. Now another nice cool feature what you could do instead of actually have constant numbers you could boost property numbers. So if we go down here you can see property sliders. Okay we can go and put those on that way we can access it later on. So we're going to go there and we can actually tell it what floor we have on each. So I'm going to go first floor, second floor, and third floor etc so this is going to be the second third and what we're going to be doing is instead of telling it in meters we're actually going to be telling it how many blocks okay so we're going to say that the first floor is on, on zero blocks the second floor is let's say 10 blocks high the third floor is let's say 20 blocks high and the fourth floor is let's say 50 blocks high okay and that's what this allows us to change on the fly and that's what I like about this little elevator system that we have here. Now that we've got all that, we're just going to get some ads. We're going to add all these numbers together. Okay, it'll make a little more sense in a few minutes. So we're just going to add all of this together. And we're going to feed the last output of this number into a memory register. Okay, this will allow us to obviously keep a number stored when we go and press something. Now we need to, of course, set that memory register whenever we press any of these buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some ORs. We're going to get one, two, three ORs there. And we're going to say, if you press any of these floors, we want you to go and set the number and remember it, okay, inside the memory register. So you can see here, we're going to set it. That's going to output a number to us of where we want to go. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to get a PID, a PID. We're going to get a basic one for our example right now. And we're going to say that this memory number that we've stored is going to be the set point. The variable is going to be our distance sensor, but our distance sensor actually brings everything in meters. So we can obviously change that into blocks. Now we know that there's four blocks in a meter. So all we're going to do is we're going to go and take from the distance sensor into a function block. We're going to say X times by four. That will convert it into blocks and that's going to be our process variable. Our actual PID is always going to be on, so we can get a constant on for that. Okay, perfect. And that means the PID is always going to be active. The settings for the PID is actually relatively simple. Just go in there. All we're going to go and do is put one, and then we're to to again, we're going to put 0.1. That's it. No fancy, funny things there, just really basic. We're going to connect the output onto our lift. We can then go and save that in here. So let's go and call it our lift MC. We can close this off. We can go and find that in our inventory. Go and put it down wherever you want. And now we just need to connect all the logic up. So the first thing we're going to start with, because I'm in advanced mode, I'm going to connect all the electricity. I'm then going to go to my composite, connect my actual panel for the different floors to my microprocessor. And then I'm going to go to my data. And I'm going to connect all this up. So I'm going to go from my lift to my actual linear track base. And I'm going to go from my distance sensor into my microprocessor. All we have to do now is click on spawn. The one thing I have forgotten to do is I haven't actually told it how high my floors are. So the easiest way to do that is if you come out of here 
you can actually measure and you can measure it using the in-game measuring thing at the right hand side. So we're going to go and get a block here and we're going to go and say first floor is let's see on the right eight. Okay, so we can go into here and we can say this is eight. So let's go to eight. Okay, I just want to go in back in there and just make sure that I've opened this up a bit. So you can see the maximum is 10. I want to make it 100 here for our example. That means we can scroll all the way up to that. Okay, so the next floor is how many blocks? So this is nine blocks. So we can go in there. So nine plus eight is going to be 17. So we can go and put that at 17. Great. And let's go and do the next one. And how many blocks high is this? This is all, this is eight blocks high now. Okay. So we can go back in. So 17 plus eight here. And we're going to come in here and increase it all the way up to 25. Perfect. So you can see we've got our different floor heights. Once we've done that, we can now spawn this in and check it. So you can see at the moment it's currently on the ground. It's not moving. If I get onto it, let's go and press second floor. It's going to raise us up and it stops us. Okay, so I've counted it wrong. So we need to increase that by one. Let's go to the next floor, increase it by one. Next floor, increase it by one. Perfect. Okay, so let's go in there and just increase this now. We're going to 9, 18, and 26. Spawn it in again. And the really cool thing is you can have different different heights for each floor because you're telling it how high it is. So let's go to floor three. Go past that floor, past that floor. There we go. And now we're on floor three. Let's press floor one. And we go down to floor one. Just like that. Really nice and simple. I'm actually just going to turn these lights off. They're very bright. There we go. So yeah, relatively simple. Now, if you want to add on to this elevator system and actually make some doors that open and close, you can do that. Now you could use, um, once again, you could use some linear tracks over here, or you could just use the normal doors that we have in game. So if I go in here, let's go and get a electric door. Okay, so sliding door. And we can add that onto our creation. So it's up to you on where you want it. You could put these on each floor or you could do it on the actual elevator itself. So I'm going to add it onto the elevator. So let me just put some space here for it. Let's go and get the door and we're going to put the door over there. Perfect. So now we want this door to open every single time that elevator gets to a floor. Well, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. However, a nice easy way to do it is to actually use a speed sensor. Okay, so we can go and get an angular speed sensor and we can put that on the actual elevator. So I'm just going to put it over here. We then go to our microcontroller. We can start adding some additional logic to it. So I'm going to go back to my properties, make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to say, okay, I want my speed sensor. So this is going to be speed input. And we're going to have a on off out. And that's going to be for my door to open it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say that if the speed, so if the speed here is equal to zero, so it's not actually moving up or down, we want the door to open. Okay, because in theory, once it's not moving, it should obviously be on the floor. So we can go and grab a threshold gate and we can put it over here and we can attach it just like that. Really simple. Now for this, you don't want it to be zero by zero because even even the you know the speed sensor always actually does find something so what i like to do is like 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 okay so negative 0 0.1 and 1 that way it can move a little bit and then open up the door okay so we can spawn that in again all we have to do now is connect our speed great connect our on and off to the door we can go and get some electricity to the door spawn in once again it should now go and open that because it's on the ground floor. You can imagine us getting into the elevator. We get to the second floor, closes the door, opens it up when we get to the second floor. Let's go to fourth floor, closes the door. And once we're on the fourth floor, it goes and opens up again. Now you could also add some doors on the outside of the actual floors itself. So for example, if we go down here, we're going to say, okay, I want another door there. Let's go over here and let's say that I want another door just over there. So we can put another door there. Let's put another door over here. Let's make sure they actually are all in line with each other. And we can put another one there. Okay, so we're going to put doors on each floor. I'm just going to go and grab the door block. And let's see, we can put one over there, one over there. One over there and one over there now we only want those doors to actually open when the elevator is on that specific floor 
So what we can do is we can go back into our microcontroller. We actually need to expand this quite a bit now because we're going to need four doors out. So go to the logic, one, two, three, four. Okay, I've made it a little bit bigger than what I need, but that's fine. We have the different floors there. So let's say door one, door two, door three, and let's say door four. Okay, make sure they are all outputs. Okay, and there we go. We can go there and now we can jump into the logic. So now that we have all our different doors here, it's actually really quite easy to go and set this up. We're going to be using something we've already got, which is checking to see if the elevator is moving or not. So we're going to really incorporate that in there, but we're also going to use something called an equal block. Now the equal block, what we're going to be doing is we're going to say, for example, if we're at zero, okay, and that actually matches to what we have in our memory register and we're also not moving, then we're going to get the door to open up. Okay, so you can see there, we're gonna get and, and, and then we want the ground floor door to open up. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna repeat that process. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Okay, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. We're gonna get all these doors connected up. And pretty much what it's checking is it's checking that obviously the elevator is not moving. And also if our memory register is equal to the floor that we want to be on, okay? So you can see here, we're just going to go and grab this. I'm going to go and connect that up. And we're also going to go now and connect all this up. So you can go and drag that over there. So that's the second floor, third floor, and we can get the fourth floor. And we can obviously go and connect it up to our memory register. That means it's only going to open when the memory register is equal to the floor that we want to be on. Okay, so there we go. We've got all that. We can go and update it. Make sure, of course, we're going to go and connect everything. So this is floor two. This is gonna be floor one, this is gonna be floor three, and this is gonna be floor four. We can go and get the electricity connected too. And now we can go and spawn this in, and it should only open those doors up when we're on that level with the lift. So you can see the ground one is opened, we can get in the lift, but all the other ones have been closed. We can go obviously go and get inside our lift, go to let's say fourth floor, both doors close, Fourth floor, both doors open. And you should see all the other doors have been closed. So of course you can make this as big as you want to, as small as you want to, you can do it for two floors. There's different ways of doing it, but you can see how simple it is of just using literally one rail system and one microcontroller. Just like that, nice and simple, nice and easy. And I think this is a great place to end the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, obviously, and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this little elevator. Of course, there are multiple different ways you can do this, but I think this is one of the most simplest ways you possibly could do it here in Stormworks. But let me know in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in any future videos. As I said, we'll see you in the next one.